start this afternoon with a lecture by Frédéric Deglis, uh, Quadratic Riemann Roch formula. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, Oliver. So, hello, everybody. So, uh, I will go on s in, in the program that I already started on orientation and so on, and I, I told you about quadratic phenomena. So, I just wanted to maybe give a, a little bit of a, a <coughs> presentation of this. Uh, so, motivic homotopy was uh, actually born from the the, the program, the dream of motifs. So Grotendieck gave us this dream about uh, f defining pure motifs, and uh, we, we all know that there, this is based on, uh, on a, a very hard set of uh, uh, standard conjectures. Um, then the theory was open through Perversius by Bellinson, who conjectured the existence of these motivic complexes and the category DM that we have seen. And uh, suddenly, uh, uh, Vyvotsky came with this new idea, which actually goes back to maybe Lefschetz in some sense, and to, to, go to incorporate algebraic topology from, from, from another point of view into algebraic geometry. And he, he had this idea of using uh, A1, uh, A1 homotopy, which actually, uh, by the way, is very close to what we do for algebraic cycles, because rational equivalence is very close to A1 homotopy. And suddenly, not only the, 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 the conjecture of Bailinson made, uh, we, we made uh, immense progress on these on uh, defining motives for the motivic complexes and so on, but also he opened the, 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 a new world, this, the, the one of a stable motivic homotopy that we have seen this, uh, this week. And, and, and uh, so in this, in this process, uh, it is, uh, one, one, there, there appears a new phenomenon which was, which was completely, I think, I think uh, uh, unseen by all these uh, visionary mathematicians, that of uh, uh, this, this notion of a Brouwer degree, motivic Brouwer degree that Fabien has, has, has invented most, mostly, and the, the existence of uh, quadratic forms and, the <coughs> and all that we have seen uh, today. So I, I'd like to now to, to focus on this, uh, on this phenomena and to try to explain how it, it, it can be incorporated in this classical vision of uh, uh, orientation theory. So let me remind you <coughs> but so we have seen that this in this stable homotopy category, let's work over a field K. Uh, uh, it ha uh, th this thing has a, a kind of Poznikov structure, which is a Poznikov tower, which is the homotopy T structure. And uh, uh, the object, the unit spec, uni unit spectrum, unit sphere spectrum, one K which is uh, S0. Uh, uh, for this homotopy structure, it's in a non-negative degree. So in fact, it's unbounded in, uh, over, over a field of characteristic zero. Uh, uh, but what we know, thanks to a theorem of Fabian, is that we can compute its zero homotopy shift by zero of one K. So, uh, and it's uh, the thing that we have seen before the unramified Milnorvit K theory, which is uh, 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 also an unexpected object a priori. It's a mi mixture, as we have seen in the talk of Fabian, between Milnor K theory and the V-tring that, uh, that uh, was uh, uh, also appeared this morning in the talk of Dan. So, uh, of course, when I say that this wasn't seen, I mean, it was somehow lurking in the Milnor conjecture, of course, but, but def definitely this definition of, of, of this object is due to Fabian and maybe Michael, so Michael Kitt. Okay, uh, so this object is, a, is a fundamental for stable homotopy, for stable homotopy be because it's the zero object, the zero homotopy object of the, unit of the sphere spectrum. And what we can say, see is that eta does not act trivially on star Milno on this object. Actually, you can see that overfield in negative degree, it's even uh, the multiplication by eta is even an isomorphism. So, k okay, minus n Milno of, of some field, let, let's say the base field, to k minus n minus one Milno of k. So, the, the degree here corresponds to the GM direction and eta 
is an element in degree minus one for a GM uh, uh, filtration, GM graduation. So can this map is just an isomorphism. Actually, this object is a vitring WK up to isomorphism. Okay. So as we have seen uh, in uh, maybe the second course, this forbid uh, uh, the existence of any orientation in the classical sense on uh, on the on Milnorvit K theory. On the other end, we what's good with this object is that we can we can really compute uh, uh, concretely what is this the the, the cohomology represented by Milnorvit K theory. So K star Milnorvit as an object of stable homotopy category represents at least in certain range, the chow v groups, chow tilde x, that we have seen. <coughs> so these groups were introduced by Barge and Morel, and they were studied a lot by uh, Jean Fazel. So let's see. Okay. Uh, you, you can see much about them. So maybe I, I just wanted to give you the, the, the concrete construction of this object because so we have seen uh, that uh, these homotopy sheaves in the talk of Joseph, if you recall, they, they satisfy the so-called causing resolution. And uh, uh, even in this context, we also say uh, 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 they, they, they can be computed. I mean, this, this object here can be computed by the so-called Rossmid complex. So I just wanted to write, write this for you. Schmidt complexes. <coughs> so let me take some smooth variety of a K. And then it, the, the, these complexes have a form, the following form. First, in, I, I look at points of co-dimension N in X. And here, what, what I have is the Grotendig fit ring of a residue field of X. But we have to add a twist for the definition to make sense, so I will put this. Nu of x, this is a cohomological form of this uh, uh, Rosschmidt complex, and nu of x is the determinant of a normal bundle of a point x in the scheme localized at x. Is it readable? Yeah. Okay, so there is this group in degree n, and I, I, I want to describe th tilde n. And it, there, we also have a differential map which goes to a point x n plus one of the vitring, well, let's say y, kappa y, and there is also, for this vitring, there is also a twist nu y. So these two objects correspond to look at uh, quadratic form over these fields, I mean, or symmetric bilinear forms, if I want, with, with a twist by nu x instead of uh, Oh, so there is a differential here, and there is another one from here, sum of x, x, n plus one, no, minus one, sorry, and let's say eta. And here we have k1 min of it, something kappa eta with some twist, okay? Now this map is also a differential, but it really plays the role of a divisor. So actually, this group up to isomorphism, it's, the same, it's isomorphic as a set to uh, a unit of a field kappa eta, but there is a different uh, group structure. And, and really, this is something like the divisor of, uh, of, uh, of, an, of an invertible function, the associated divisor. So now the chow with groups, chow tilde n of x, is just the kernel of D, and this is a different <coughs> modulo uh, image of the divisor, okay? So you have to take uh, uh, formal direct sums of elements here, which are uh, cycles, but with coefficients in quadratic forms. But you have only to, you, you want to look only at uh, those, those sums which are unramified in certain sense. And then you mod out by a rela an equivalence relation, which is exactly analog to the rational equivalence, okay? And the thing, it's really so, I want to stress that because this, this definition makes it very close to the usual definition, the classical definition of Chow groups. And actually, if you mod everywhere, uh, you mod to all the groups by eta, you will fall exactly in the definition of Chow groups of, of cycles uh, in co-dimension n. 
Okay. <coughs> so, uh, as said before, because this action of eta is non-trivial, this commodity theory cannot be oriented, and we have to find something else to work with. Maybe another another group that I want to recall is the <coughs> well. Or before that, I just want to say something else. So, uh, motivic cohomology. The first form of motivic cohomology was the higher true groups defined by by Bloch. So the idea was to extend the cohomology defined by true groups into a, 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 a bigraded cohomology theory such that localization exact sequence exists. So uh, for for the Chauvit groups also we can do this construction and we can define uh, higher tr higher Chauvit groups or uh, kind of uh, motivic cohomology associated to this. And this is uh, <coughs> then we define, this was defined by, by uh, in a book on Milnorvit motives with Jean, uh, Paul Arne, Baptiste Calmet, I mean, uh, Tom Bachman, and Paul Arne Osvar. Uh, and we can define, so this ring spectrum HMW, which is the Milnorvit motivic cohomology spectrum, so it plays the same role uh, than higher true groups, but with respect to Chauvit groups. And maybe there is a, so it's, it's defined or only over a field, so there, there are also definitions with a very, very effective slice filtration of Tom Bachman. But uh, for this talk, I will, I will just need the version with Q coefficients. And actually the definition is been very simple. You take the sphere spectrum and you tensor with Q. Okay. So this is, in some sense, the true analog of a singular cohomology with rational coefficients. Okay, then, so we know that with Chow groups, Chow groups are completely related with K theory. And similarly, Chauvit groups are related with this uh, Hermitian K theory or higher Grothendieck-Witt groups that we have seen. So there exists a Hermitian K theory spectrum, motivic spectrum. So the notation varies. So I use the notation of uh, Markov listing. So I will write this DWS. So it's a ring spectrum in stable homotopy category with S. And when S is regular, like K theory, it's like uh, KGL, it's related with Hermitian K theory, but it's, it's a bit tricky. So formula, let me check, just to be sure. GW in degree n and shift i of s is isomorphic to, it's, so this, co this theory is 8-4 periodic, while k theory was 2-1 periodic, but here this is what it is, and it's isomorphic to G W two I minus N I. So this notation is a notation due to Hornbostel and Schlichting, I guess. But concretely, this uh, this will be isomorphic to uh, orthogonal K theory in degree two I minus N of S. Sorry, if uh, I is congruent to zero mod four and to symplectic K theory, where two I minus N S if I is congruent to two modulo four. Okay, so strangely indeed it interpolates between these two K theory. There are some there is something for Y congruent to one and, and three, but it's a variant of this object. Okay, and uh, it's also non it's it cannot be oriented and actually we have a fundamental exact sequence. So we can more or less determine the action of eta on this key, on this theory. So here we look at multiplication by eta. So it gives you a map like this. Uh, but also you can forget the so, the so called Hermitian form on this object and you go to K theory. This is forget map. And this map is a homotopy exact sequence. So Distinguished triangle, if you prefer. Okay, 
Out of that, you can see that the action of eta is non-trivial also on this Hermitian K theory. Okay, so that gives us two Como G theories. This one is clearly fundamental, and GW, as I said, is related with uh, Chauvet groups, which are non-oriented. And for them, there is a theory of, of orientation. So let me pause before this. So the, there is a theory of um, weak orientations, let's say, <coughs> which is mainly due to Panin and Walter. Um, so what I will present to you is uh, uh, now is uh, this theory plus a lot of input of a, of a, of a work which, which was in, done in collaboration for many years with Jean Fazel and also partly uh, with David Coulet and Jens Hornmoster. Okay. So what do you do to get an, a notion of uh, a theory of characteristic classes for both these, these cohomology theories? So you, you get back to, <coughs> to the basics or, or one point that, uh, that I considered before. So as you see here, it looks like uh, vector bundles, uh, symplectic and symmetric vector bundles will play a role. And of course, it's also, it appears also in GW. And so I, can, I, I should recall that uh, there is a diagram of n group schemes like this, G and infinity. So, okay, you can map uh, matrix with trivial determinant into GL, and also Hermitian matrix have trivial determinant, and they go that way. Uh, these groups are nice, uh, so it was more or less explained in the it was explained in the, in the talk of, uh, of Philip. So if you look at SL torso or SP torso, uh, uh, when, when you use Niznevich, Zaisky, Niznevich et al, or FPPF topology, it won't change the, the answer. So that's a very special uh, uh, case. And it justifies to look this particular group, okay? So what we have is that SL torsos corresponds to vector bundles, so for X, say, P of x, vector bundles, plus additional structure. And here it's just a trivialization of a determinant. Let's say A1 of x. <coughs> and here, uh, sp torsos corresponds to vector bundles, but this time with a, 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 quadrat, a symplectic form to psi. So symplectic form is bilinear form like this, uh, which is uh, over x, x, sorry, which is uh, anti-symmetric, bilinear, and non-degenerate. Okay, so you can check these with uh, equivalence of categories. Uh, and now the idea is that, uh, of course, you can consider classifying spaces for these objects, PSL and BSP. And uh, you can play the same game that I, I, I used to define uh, algebraic cobordism here. On this object, BSL and BSP, you are BSLN, BSP, 2N. You have a canonical bundles equipped with the relevant structure. And you can look at the term spaces of this object. And so you did you did use by the same procedure that I did for MGL, you did use ring spectra, which goes that way. So there is MSP, sorry, MSL, and MGL. Okay, and both these and these are all ring spectra. Okay, but then, then we learned that an, an orientation, so it was quite concretely just a class. Uh, in Komoji, but it was also uh, uh, an, algebra, an, uh, an algebra structure over MGL. So we can look at SL orientation and SP orientation by the same procedure. We can just say SL orientation will just be an MSL algebra structure, SP orientation oops, will also be an MSP or S algebra structure and uh, so usual orientation 
I just recall. So I can say GL. These are just MGL algebra structure. Okay. So with this uh, uh, formal definition or theoretical de de definition, you clearly have this implication. If you have an, uh, a classical orientation, then you will get an SL orientation. And if you have an SL orientation, you will get an SP orientation. Okay. So there's, there is a hierarchy of orientation. And this one, these two ones are weaker than, uh, than here. Okay. And I claim that these, uh, these two notions of orientation are the one that we are looking for for Chao tilde and uh, GW. So uh, at this point, uh, uh, I, I must comment. So SL orientation are very close to GL orientation. And, and uh, we have seen that already. Uh, and and uh, they are very nice. So you, as, as associated to this, you can define Tom classes for any vector bundle if you consider twist by line bundles as uh, in, in, in the cohomology. And there is also this notion of Euler class that we have seen in the Trovic groups, which is, uh, which is central in, in, the, in the obstruction theory of uh, Fabien, of Morel, Aravin, uh, Azok, and Fazel. But uh, on the other end, we will see, and uh, my talk will focus on this, on this one, of uh, this weakest uh, notion of orientation, of an SP orientation, we will see that this, this, uh, this notion is much, it's quite uh, uh, similar to this orientation. And in particular, for this one, we really have a, a, a notion of characteristic classes uh, that, we, uh, that I will explain, okay? So the talk will fo focus on this uh, SP orientation, but SL orientation are <coughs> very interesting also. So cool. Other questions? Okay, then I can go on. <coughs> Time. Okay. So, what makes this uh, this notion uh, interesting? So let's first start. So I said that we can define classifying spaces, and BSP two. So you can check that it's isomorphic to this so-called object HP infinity of S, which is the infinite uh, uh, Hermitian, pro uh, Hermitian productive space. <coughs> okay, so it's, it's quite close to the case of BGM. Uh, and if you look at BSL1, of course, you won't get something very interesting. But here we get that. Uh, so this is an mean scheme. And, by, and we can also compute the the first uh, layer of this, it's called, sorry, it's called hyperbolic productive space. Um, um, this HP1S is actually A1 equivalent to P1 pointed by infinity, but smash two. Okay. In this theory, you will see that uh, uh, all the all the degrees are doubled in some sense. So um, Tom Bachman said that it goes at double speed. So this is how we get the idea of, of defining very effective slice filtration. But okay, so we have this, and, and out of this, you can state, obtain a theorem, which is due to Panin and Walter. So we which is the exact analog of what we obtain in the, in the oriented case or GL oriented case. So it goes like this, so you take E, a motivic ring spectrum, motivic ring spectrum over S. Then there is an equivalence between, uh, there is a bijection between the following sets. First, the sets of classes B in a reduced cohomology E for two of this object H P infinity of S, such that B restricted to HP1 of S. So it will belong in e for e for 2 of this space here, which I recall is just 1, 2, 4 in my over notation. So it corresponds, so I will <coughs> write it in this 
abusively like that. It, it, it must perfect to a unit. Secondly, we have the MSP S algebra structure on E. Okay, and thirdly, I'll be <coughs> a bit vague here. Uh, and there is a system of uh, uh, Tom classes. There exists Tom classes. Uh, okay, so for any V psi symplectic bundle over S, there exists a Tom class, Tom V psi. It depends on, on psi, but it lives in E, uh, so it's 4R, 2R of a Tom space of just the vector bundle associated with Psi, Psi, and so rank of V is 2R, okay? By the way, for the existence of a symplectic form implies that the vector, uh, symplectic bundles are always of rank even, okay? Plus you have to uh, ask, okay, maybe I should take <coughs> another board. You also have to, if you want really an equivalence, you have to ask axiom for these term classes. Axioms which implies that multiplication by the term class will induce an isomorphism. <coughs> but I will, I will just say plus properties. And if you want an idea of these properties, these are the analog of the property that we have seen for the term class in the GL case, okay? Okay, so I won't prove this theorem because the, the, the proof is quite similar to, to the one in the GL case and I want to advance. <coughs> but uh, what you get, so we will say actually that uh, EB, so we retain the first here, we'll say that EB is an SP or symplectic oriented ring spectrum. Okay, so the examples are Chao Tilda, I mean, K star Minovit over perfect field, this HHMW of Z, K, also with rational coefficient, W, Q, S, and you also have DW of S, and tautologically you have this. Uh, symplectic cobordism ring spectrum. So this one, by, the, by, by, by this theorem, is universal among the SP-oriented ring spectrum. But what you can see also is that uh, if you take a ring spectrum in, in uh, SH of S, which is rational, then it will automatically acquire a symplectic orientation. Like in topology, in topology, uh, uh, SH top tensor Q is just isomorphic to a derived category of Q, Q vector spaces and all uh, all, all rational spectra are oriented in the classical sense. They are just uh, <coughs> a kind of islander maclean spectrum. Okay? So now we can, we can actually go, go on the program that we, 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 run, we run for the GL-oriented case. And so what do you get out of B? B induces a map. So <coughs> It induces a map at, uh, that I will write B1. It goes from the uh, something that I, yeah, H1, the torsors on X on BSP2. And by using the same uh, strategy that I, 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 I took for BGM, we get a map to E42 of X, okay? So this, we can define it as the Picard group of the symplectic Picard group, if you want. But what one should be extra careful here. So remember for the first chain class, C1, I said it's not always a, a, a morphism of group. Here the situation is even worse because this group, this torsor here, there's no group structure on it. If you take a two symplectic bundle, then you take the tensor product, the, the, the tensor product of a two symplectic form will become symmetric and not, uh, and not symplectic. So there, there is not even the question of, of, of of asking if B1 is, is additive because there's no group structure here, okay? But I'll come, ba to, I'll come back to this point. <coughs> so 
So I pass details because I have only one course remaining. But uh, uh, Panin and Walter also proved uh, a symplectic projective bundle theorem. Projective bundle theorem. Um, and Walter for sy symplectic projective space spaces, and this leads <coughs> to Borel classes. So this leads to characteristic classes, as we did for the higher trunk classes, characteristic classes, which are called Borel. And these are classes B I of a symplectic bundle which leaves in E for I to I, let's say of X, if uh, if psi is defined over X, okay? Uh, in such a way that uh, B0 equal one, B1 was defined here. And the higher Borel classes comes out of uh, this projective bundle uh, Theorem. So they satisfy good properties. For example, it's relevant to introduce the total Borel class, which is just a one plus some I strictly positive of B I B psi times T I. And we have a, a witness sum formula. So these classes are multiplicative, where here you take the orthogonal sums if you want. Okay. So everything, everything is fine except this, uh, this problem here. So there's no uh, group structure on symplectic bundles. So this, this means that uh, if we wanted to have some uh, kind of formal group law underlying this, uh, this object, where we, we are stuck. <coughs> okay, but the, the tensor product of two symplectic bundles is not symplectic. But the idea of Walter, so he, did, he never published this, but is that if you take f uh, a tripole tensor product of symplectic bundle, then it becomes again symplectic. <coughs> so observation. Oh, let's, let me write double di is symplectic bundle like here. Then this tensor product is symplectic, okay? Because you, you take a tensor product of psi one, psi two, and psi three, and uh, it becomes anti-symmetric again, okay? So the idea is that, well, we can, we can try to use this, this operation to find a, a proper analog of a formal group law, and the proposition goes like this. So at this point, so Bo Walter did not publish his idea, and so, we, we took this, uh, we took the enterprise to do it with Jean. <coughs> and so let's take E, B, and SP oriented ring spectrum. Then the, the theorem says that there exists a power series like this, FT, X, Y, Z, which belongs in uh, the ring, the base ring is just a coefficient ring over S. There are three formal series, of course, because uh, there are three ve uh, ve objects here. And there is a var variable here, T. So why is that? The drawback of this, uh, this, uh, this uh, procedure is that uh, this triple tensor product has rank eight. So there are several boy classes associated to this. <coughs> And we are, we are forced to take them into account. So this formal power series has this form, ft, x, y, z is equal to one plus sum from y going to one, four. So let me write this like this. So it's a collection of four power series, actually. And it satisfies the following property, such that for uh, vi as above, the Borel class BT of this triple tensor product, E123, is equal to the evaluation. So it's a total Borel class, right? It's equal to the evaluation like this, V1, 
les taux hmm, refus ok great <coughs> so So at this point, everything worked uh, as in the case, as, a, as in the GL oriented case. So actually, what we use is a, is a kind of a ternary group structure on HP infinity, like, for, like, like we had for P infinity, and everything went works fine. And actually, so, well, the problem starts when trying to find the, the correct axioms for this power series. So let me comment. So <coughs> on this, uh, another kind of theory which, le which, uh, which this one existed before. So there is this notion of bush stabber due to bush stabber two-valued formal group law. So, or which he which used to try to, con to understand the symplectic cobordism in topology. So this theory was developed and, and well developed. And, actu and actually what you get here is uh, the, the basic objects are, are, the are the data of a two formal group law. And in some sense, it's a two, two series. So in order to encode the, the axioms of this, uh, this property, we had to to introduce the multi-valued the th uh, theory of multi-valued series. So let's say N M series. So the N here is the number of value, number of values, and this M here is the number of vari variables. Okay, so a formal group law is just a one-two series, and, uh, and, and these ft, x, y, z are actually four free series. Okay, what's tricky in this theory of multi-valued series? So if you want to uh, uh, um, state the axioms of this group, <coughs> of this object, uh, you have to define uh, the substitution, a, substitu a substitution procedure, sorry. And it's quite tricky, so I won't do it now, but uh, <coughs> I can just give a definition. It's like a proposition definition, if you want. Uh, let me add a letter to this power series. So it depends on B. I will write B here everywhere. And the definition is def proposition definition is that uh, FT e X, Y, Z satisfies oops, the axioms, let's say, of a Four valued valued formal ternary oops, group, abelian group actually. So there are several axioms and I I, 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 dear, I don't have time, so I could have used uh, beamers, but I don't have time to state them. Maybe one of them, the most difficult is this one. So there is the associativity axiom. So you have to take x, y, z, u, v, five vari vari variables, and you say that f, t, f, t, x, y, z, comma, u, v, is equal as a for a series to f, t, x, f, t, y, z, u, v. Okay, and this is where you have to define this uh, substitution procedure. But I just want to say that this is, if, I, if I'm not, not wrong, I think it's a six, yeah, it's a 16-5 series. 
there are 16 possible values. So you imagine you you can <laughs> imagine that this theory of uh, of, uh, of for free multi-valued series is very complicated computationally. Anyway, we say that Ft is a formal ternary law, and we abbreviate this FTL. Okay, so the theory is very complicated. There is axioms for symmetry, neutral element, and there's also a special axiom uh, called epsilon linearity, <coughs> which makes the theory difficult, but really completely uh, analogous to that of FGL. So <coughs> I want just to stress something, first, first difference here. Uh, so of course, FTL, this is over some air, some ring. So here it's over uh, E star star of S, <coughs> which I call this R. So we can make up an, ab an algebraic definition for this uh, notion of FTL, but there is a restriction on R. So <coughs> I said before that uh, in on SH of S, there is always this element epsilon, which is minus minus one, which leaves in the endomorphism of the unit object. Okay. And this is also the novel formula is minus uh, one plus eta minus one. And so this element is, a, is of degree one. And so you can check that on any object of a stable homotopy category, there is an action of some ring, which we denote by Z epsilon, which is just, <coughs> there is an action of epsilon, but also epsilon satisfies some relation. And it's just epsilon square equal one. Okay, <coughs> so for in the theory of FTL, all, uh, all ring of coefficients uh, are Z epsilon al algebra, or is um, Z epsilon algebra. <coughs> and by the way, there is something that you should observe that this is just a quaternic group of Z uh, star, uh, defined uh, from a symmetric bilinear form. And this is proved by uh, more by Milner and Usmola. Okay, so there is always this action of Z epsilon. But in this ring, of course, there is torsion, there's a lot of torsion, and it makes the theory much more complicated. But in some sense, for example, so we can specialize the, the, the parameter epsilon. Um, if you, you, you take epsilon equal to minus one, then you get something which is uh, closer to oriented cohomology theory. And if you take uh, epsilon to be equal to one, then this is really in the quadratic form, in the quadratic case. So it means that uh, the, S, the stable homotopy category, at least if you invert two, st uh, splits into two parts, the plus part and the minus part. And we can observe this in this uh, ring here. Okay, that makes the theory uh, already different from, uh, <coughs> from formal group law. What can we do out of this? We can still make some computation, by the way. Um, <coughs> so it's difficult to det determine what are the possible FTL, but we can still do it. So this, the MW motivic cohomology ring, <coughs> has an FTL, FTL with finite coefficients, with a finite number of coefficients. So maybe it's it's uh, useful that uh, I wrote formal ternary law generically. So remember, so this is a four-free series, and so FT, X, Y can be written as one plus, so there will be four series and then these are power series in three variables. So it's y, j, k. There are coefficient a, y, j, k, l times x, i, y, j, z, k times t of r, l. Okay, and these coefficients, it lives in e, um, 
something. So uh, we, we declare that it has degree uh, i plus j plus k minus l. OK. And to evaluate the complexity of, uh, of the formal ternary law, we say that ft has degree n if uh, the only non-trivial coefficients a, y, g, k, l are, are, are of degree less than n. Then this FTL um, has only finite coefficients, normal coefficient, and has degree 0. Um, so we declare, so this is the, we say it has the additive formal ternary law. And you must remember that uh, the additive formal group law is the simplest one where uh, there's only these two coefficients. Okay, So it's really an analogy here. Uh, just to say it, there is a finite number of coefficients. Uh, it has actually 10 non-trivial coefficients. So I gave them. So these are quadratic forms, actually, uh, in this element, in this uh, ring here. Uh, so they are universal in some sense. I won't uh, write them in the blackboard, but they are in my in my notes here. There is uh, so this this computation was obtained with Jean from me, and there is another computation obtained by uh, Jean and Olivier Aution. And it says that Hermitian K theory or higher Grothendieck with groups over any base has an FTL of degree two. Which can be expressed, which can be expressed with two parameters, expressed with two parameters, and I think it has, and has, uh, I think, twenty-two non-trivial coefficients. Which were compu computed explicitly uh, by uh, Jean and Olivier, and they also are in my notes. Okay, uh, so this one, uh, so the two parameters, you, you, won't, you shouldn't be surprised. So I said that the, uh, the emission K theory is 8 4 periodic, so there is some uh, periodicity element, like the bot element for emission K theory, but you can also forget the symplectic form, and then uh, somehow the bot element. Uh, has also to be incorporated, so this is why there are kind of two two parameters in this case here. Uh, 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 unlike in the case of K theory, where you had only one parameter, which was the bot class. Okay. So this uh, formal ternary law, we we call it the multiplicative, just by analogy, FTL. So. At this point, you should remember, we should re remember that uh, for formal group laws, there are only two, two, two kinds of uh, formal group laws with finite coefficients, the additive and the multiplicative. So uh, here, we don't know this. So we try to run, uh, 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 with David Coulet, we try to run uh, uh, a computation of the, the restriction that you have on formal group law. And maybe I should add uh, <coughs> something which is easy. Yes, so if you, if, you, if, you, if you take epsilon equal 1 in the ring of coefficients here, that drastically f simplifies the, the constraint. But it's still, uh, still, it's still difficult to express. Uh, so what, what we were able to prove that is that uh, if we invert 2, there is only uh, essentially one uh, formal ternary law, if you invert 2 in the coefficient, uh, re disregarding epsilon by, by, uh, by doing computations. Uh, there is always an, uh, an automorphism of epsilon which goes, which sends epsilon to minus epsilon. So there are two possible FTL, but actually only one up to this uh, automorphism. And I think we were able to prove that there, only, there is only one uh, up to this parameters formal ternary law of degree two if we invert two and we take epsilon equal one. But even if we take epsilon equal minus one, it's, it's really very difficult to to find all the possible FTL of degree two. So that bounds dr drastically the coefficients, but uh, we, don't, we don't know much, much more. 
Okay. And by the way, we don't know that there is only uh, uh, these two formal ternary law with fin finite coefficients. But uh, before saying more, I, 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 I just want to say that it's, it's really easy to prove. So we can define, uh, can define a category of formal ternary law, category FTL, let's say, like this, of formal ternary laws, which is, which is uh, completely analogous to the category FGL. We also build a functor from FGL to FTL. So this corresponds to the fact that uh, if you have a, a GL orientation, then you deduce an SP orientation, and this gives you how to cook this, this functor. So to some FGL, you can associate an FTL, which is uh, not so complicated. Uh, at this point, I, 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 I just want to, to add uh, for the specialists that we actually we incorporate inside this, in, in this functor the category of two FGL of Bush Staber. So there is also uh, the, the, these map factors through uh, two FGL of certain types, type one actually. <coughs> but also what you can prove is that there exists a universal an initial, actually, an initial object, initial object of FTL, uh, which, we, which we denote like this, W, F, T, W, and the variables. And we call this ring the Walter ring. So this is formal, so of course, uh, uh, what do you have? You have these uh, coefficients, a, y, g, k, l. So you take a, 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 polynomial, a polynomial with coefficient in z, epsilon, and all these variables. And all the relations that, uh, that I did not wrote, did not write, uh, um, are, are uh, generate an ideal in this ring. The Walter ring is just the quotient of this, uh, of this big uh, polynomial ring modulo the relation. And what's, what's tremendously hard to compute is this associativity, uh, uh, the ideal corresponding to this associativity relation because it generates so many uh, 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 relations that we, we actually we, 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 we really r quickly run out of possible uh, computable thing, um, even if we run in computers. But uh, before going to the Riemann-Roch formulas, I just want to so what's interesting about this ring? So actually, we have questions. The first, questions, the first question that we can have, and so of course, because it's initial, there is a, a map W into MSP, four star, two star of, say, any field. And uh, oops, we can ask, uh, is this an isomorphism? So, it would be, in some sense, logical. <coughs> so we are really, we cannot even prove that this W is a, uh, is a polynomial uh, algebra. Actually, one of the problem is that in this ring, there is torsion, there is epsilon torsion. <coughs> but okay, so we don't have a Lazard uh, theorem. Also, there is something which is interesting. So if, we, if you look at uh, complex realization, you get the map. MSP four star, two star of C, and this realizes two pi. Sorry, I should go there. Pi minus two star, minus star of the topological MSP. So this uses the work of uh, Tom Barton and Mike Hopkins. <coughs> to build these maps. And uh, uh, this ring is, yeah? Here? Uh, ah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sure, sure. <coughs> okay, so uh, uh, this ring is very complicated. I mean, uh, uh, it was computed by Bush Taber using his two formal, his uh, sphere of two valued gro group laws. If you invert two, it's not, it's not easy to find the. the actual computation in this paper, but it's done. But two torsion is really difficult to compute. And we can wonder uh, what, uh, what the generators of this ring become into through this map, and what, what is this map, actually? So. I 
think it's SP of C. It's a uh, topo. Yeah, yeah. This one, uh, wait, I must check then. Okay, so the, the core, the, I, I, I must let, uh, <coughs> well, the, the one that you get, I think. If Tom is there, maybe he's not there. He will answer that, okay. So the, 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 the point is that you, we get a new ring here, which might uh, have something, will, which might give new, new information on the torsion on this, uh, group here in topology. Sorry? I think so, this is, uh, this is why I'm a bit confused because uh, it's surprising that uh, R, C and R, and then you can also look at real realization and then you get MU. I mean, you can you can you can use this W. I think the other map is M S P four star two star and, uh, of R, and then it goes to pi minus star mu. This works and okay, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I only have four minutes to <laughs> to state the <laughs> quadratic. No, it's not your. It's not your fault. It's mine. <coughs> uh, to state the uh, the quadratic for Riemann Hall formula, but you can you can imagine already what I am I I will be doing. So uh, if we have a morphism of uh, of ring spectra, which b such that both are sp oriented, then this morphism does not respect the SP orientation, and you will get out of this an isomorphism of uh, the, the underlying FTL. And, and out of this, you can generate a tot class and, and state, uh, uh, you can generate a tot class. Then second step is that you have this fundamental class with a coefficient for, which are valid for any ring spectrum. But if we have an SP orientation, then we can trivialize some tone spaces, the tone spaces which come from vector bundles with a symplectic structure. So we can, we can deduce from this fundamental class for uh, some SP-oriented uh, morphisms. And out of this, the, the, the Gizin map uh, for this uh, object. And then you can state uh, uh, the same kind of uh, Groton kriemann hoff formula in this uh, SP-oriented context. So I just want to, to state the formula uh, which is the most interesting one. So first step. So we have an analog of a churn character, which is the Borel character, BOT. It's built out of a Borel classes, <coughs> like uh, for the churn character. It goes from this GW ring that tensor Q, and it goes to a sum over Y and Z of some Milnovit multi cohomology spaces, but I will use this notation. They are a bit, uh, uh, they vary. So this, this Borel character alternates, and what we have is that this HMW epsilon i q s, it's either HMW, the ring, it, the, the object itself, its i is even, or just the motivic ring spectrum if i is odd, okay? So there are, there are vid components only in degree modulo 4. And uh, this character is compatible with the churn character, KGL tensor Q, S going to the sum, and Z, H, M, Q, S, as I forgot, 2J, J, I, I, 2I, okay? <coughs> so BOT is a morph in, uh, is actually an isomorphism of ring spectrum. You can ch check this like the churn character. And so, as I said, you can associate to this a Todd class. So there exists a Todd class 
associated to a Borel character. So it starts from this time, instead of k0, it's ksp0 of x, and it goes to something like this. So you have chow tilde 0 of x plus chow 2 of x, and it goes there. It's gone. It alternates like this, so it has several components. <coughs> okay, so as I said, now if you have a map f from x to s, uh, which is sp oriented, so for s it means that the virtual tangent bundle, term of f, is actually is given with an isomorphism with uh, a symplectic version, so to f tilde of s is in k sp0 of x. And the, remember that this uh, virtual tangent bundle was a virtual vector bundle, so let's do it like this. So once you have this, you can get a riemann hoch formula, which goes, uh, which can be written like this. So it's f lower star in, uh, let me, okay, it's the Borel character, sorry, of t applied to f lower star with this orientation for dw of any element, u, u in gw star star of x, and it's equal to f lower star, but with for this theory hmw, so it will be a, sometimes a degree, but here what you have is the usual thing, the third class of u times uh, l, no, third class, sorry, of this, uh, this element here, term f tilde, times uh, the Borel character of u. Okay. So this is the quadratic Riemann formula. Uh, just to finish the talk, so the most interesting case of, uh, of, uh, of this formula is when s is a spectrum of a field, and say x. So this is uh, this must be just LCI, <coughs> smoothable. But if f is if s is a spectrum of a field and x is smooth and proper you get the so-called Hirschbruch riemann hoch formula. And from what I checked, uh, actually, what, what we get is the formula that uh, Mark and, Apron and, and uh, Raskit have proved, uh, which compute the Euler characteristic, I mean, the quadratic Euler characteristic of some uh, symplectic or symmetric bundle in terms of a degree of an, Euler, of an Euler class. But in general, so we have this more general formula, and we, there, there is a lot of computation to do now out of this uh, formula. Okay, so I think this is all we have. Uh, <coughs> we have seen uh, these new characteristic classes uh, appearing, these Borel classes, and uh, and all what we can do. We have seen a little bit of the degree here. This is, for example, the degree E1 that appeared in the talk of Sabrina. And uh, now there are many, many new open questions which arise from this. Okay, thank you.